So one, okay, you, you wrote a book about the unsellable generation. Why do you call it the unsellable generation? Well, what, and here's what I mean. So the book is not published yet. So it's been written for about four months. It's going through with a, a publishing company right now, a, a pretty big one. Uh, and it won't be published till I think November of 2022. I don't like, if you self-publish a book, it's a lot faster. You publish a book where you want it in Barnes and Noble, like bookstores, there is a lot of freaking stuff that goes into that. I think you've published a book too, haven't you? Yeah, so you even know like self-publishing takes a while. Did you self-publish it or did you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, self-publishing takes a while, but like publishing it, like going through all that stuff, it takes forever, it's insane. So that is not on the bookshelf yet, but November, you guys go to Barnes and Noble, Amazon, it'll all be there. So um, what, what I mean by unsellable generation is this, okay? Uh, and it's, you know, let, let, me, let me say that with a grain of salt. Do I mean that people are not sellable? No. Do I mean that people's buying behaviors have changed drastically in the last several years? Yes. Okay. And what I mean by that is a lot of people believe that if they have a great product, if they have a great service, that they can just go out and tell people they've got the best this and best that, and just people are going to line up and want to buy it. And I call that product pushing. Okay. Mm -hmm. One thing we have to understand, and this is probably the case even in door to door, but especially like if you're selling to CEOs or, or corporations or companies, or even, you know, you're selling life insurance policy, it doesn't really matter, even cars. Okay. Your prospects are more cautious and skeptical about making the wrong buying decisions than they have ever been before. And why is that? You know, one of, one of our clients that we do, all the training for his company. His name's Brandon Kane. He's the author of a, a book called Hook Point, How to Stand Out in the Three Second World. Big national bestseller. Look back at that. It's a great book. He does all the social media for like MTV, Taylor Swift, Rihanna, big social media guy in, in Hollywood. He says in his book that there are over 3 billion, so there are over 3 billion content creators every day that are trying to take away your prospect's attention from what you were trying to do. You were even competing with 13 year old junior high girls on TikTok now. You were literally competing with TikTok people and videos, okay? Guess how many content creators there were 20 years ago? Just take a wild guess. Maybe 30? More than that, there was about a million. There's over 3 billion content creators now. 20 like years ago. I'm thinking like motion picture and stuff. You're like, no, I'm 30, dude. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm just I'm just saying that like content oh, creators yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that are yeah, pulling yeah. your prospects' attention spans away from you, right? Like he talks about, we live in a three second world. How do you stand out? Okay, because of the information age we live in today, with the power of the internet and especially social media, we have to understand that your prospects are being sold to 24 hours a day, seven days a week, month after month, year after year. Now, when I go to events and say that, people are like. That's not true, Jeremy. I don't have salespeople coming by or calling me or coming to my door 24 hours a day. What are you talking about? I'm like, well, I want you to really think about it. When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? You grab your phone, you get on your Facebook or your IG, and you see what? Ads trying to what? Sell you something. You walk into your kitchen, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. Like. You know, if you drink coffee, you get your coffee or your inner drink or whatever you drink, you turn on the TV to see some, you know, some news and you see what? Commercials trying to sell oh, you something, something, right? You get into your car, you're driving to the office. In your case, you know, with, with the guys you train, they're driving to the, you know, the doors, the neighborhood, and they turn on the radio and what do they hear? Ads trying to sell you something, right? You get on your lunch break, you get back on your phone, you look on your social media, you see your aunt trying to pitch her latest, greatest MLM she's trying to recruit you in. You are constantly being sold to 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and because of that, human beings have built walls of resistance that any time they feel that someone is trying to sell them, they immediately go into fight or flight mode and try to get rid of you, especially on the doors, as you know, there's a lot going through their brain when you knock on somebody's door and they don't know who you are, or even like a cold call, all right? So we have to become what I call problem finders and problem solvers, not product pushers, okay? Now, what do I mean by problem finding? Like any book back here, like any of these books back here on sales or whatever, they're all going to say, you have to be a problem solver. I don't think I've ever read a sales book that did not say, I have to be a problem solver. Okay, I get that. But here's your problem. If your prospects don't buy from you, you can't really solve their problems, okay? Yes. 
you have to be much better in our day and age at problem finding. And what does that mean? That means helping your prospect find problems in their mind that before you knocked on the door, before you called them, before you were in a meeting with them, they didn't actually realize they had. One thing we all have to know, your average prospect does not even know they have a problem when you first start talking to them, especially if you're cold calling them on the door. It's not like they're sitting around like, oh, I've got these bad problems. Oh, a door-to-door -door salesperson, I'm so glad they stopped by. They're not thinking that. You're like catching them completely off guard, just like if you're calling somebody on the phone as a cold call. Most people, even if they book on your calendar, if you're selling solar maybe and they're, you're doing lead generation, they're booking on your calendar or you're doing outbound leads, most people do not realize they have a problem. Or maybe they realize they have a problem, but they don't realize how bad that problem really is or maybe what the consequences are if they don't do anything about solving that problem. Now, yeah. once you learn, like you like you talk about, and I, you know, I've read your book, actually, I read your book here the last couple of weeks when I saw I was gonna be in your podcast. Mm -hmm. Once you learn advanced questioning skills, uh, it allows the prospect to not only see that they have one problem, but maybe they have two, three, or four other problems that they didn't realize they had. That's your sales ability that allows them to see that. You can't tell them that because that's going to go in one ear out the other. You're biased. You're the salesperson. Yeah. Your questions allow them to tell themselves that and they start to view you as like the expert, the trusted authority that's going to get them the results they want. So in our day and age, you have to be really good at problem finding, problem solving. You cannot be a product pusher unless you want to be an average salesperson. Now, what do most salespeople do? Okay, in any industry, like when we go in to do audits, like Google AdWords is one of our clients. We trained four of their larger divisions. We went and did an audit with them and they're already doing pretty well financially, okay? But when we heard their salespeople were like, oh my God, like it was horrible, okay? If anybody, well, nobody in your podcast maybe is working from Google, so I'm just gonna say here. So don't spread this around, no, right? No, no, you can send but, it. But it was bad. They were just product pushing. They're like, oh, hi, uh, you know, I'm from Google uh, AdWords and uh, I want to talk to you today about our cloud services and blah, blah, and just start talking about the cloud services. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like you guys are losing so many sales. So what do most salespeople do? They're taught how to ask a few consultative questions. What's your biggest problem? What solution are you looking for? What's your budget? And then they start talking about the features and benefits and how they have the best this and the best that, which by the way, doesn't every salesperson say they have yeah, the best product? Exactly. Like how many salespeople do you know? Like, yeah, John, you know, our product's fifth best in the market. Nobody does right so when we say things like that subconsciously it actually triggers your prospect to trust you less because they're used to every salesperson and company saying the exact thing right so it's like taking a bucket of mud and like throwing it up against the wall and like hoping and praying that something you're going to say is going to magically trigger the prospect to want to buy from you and i call that hopium it's a drug that so many salespeople are on and entrepreneurs where they just hope and pray that something they're going to say is going to cause that person to want to buy. And it's such a hard and unpredictable way to make a living. So you want to be problem finding, problem solving, not product pushing.